CEO of Twitch just stepped down, and uh, my buddy Charlie made a video on it. And uh, let's figure out what's going on here, and uh, maybe the future of Twitch could be looking bright. Got a piping hot meal fresh out of the Olive Garden microwave straight to your dinner table here. This news bright is fresh included. off the press. The CEO of Twitch has announced that they're stepping... Dude, you know what's crazy? CEO of Twitch steps down. I don't even know who the f*** this is. I've never heard of him. I have never seen him a single time in my entire life. And to be honest, that's, that speaks volumes. Who in the hell is Dan Clancy? I know Tom Clancy, the dude who makes Rainbow Six Siege. Who is this guy? Stepping down. Emmett Shear has been with the company at the helm for 16 years, apparently. And today what? has decided to move on. So he's quit his position and passed the torch. You know what's me up why does moist critical look like he's ai here am i nuts like is my brain so rotted that i just can't tell the difference more dude he literally looks like a robot in this video this is really interesting because it happens so soon after youtube just experienced something very similar with susan stepping yeah. down back to back these two major companies had their ceos walking off into the sunset together yeah, and all of the esports teams being let off as well. I'm starting to worry about the sake of the internet, but also, also Jesus Christ, bro, I think he just shit his pants. I'm not Anyways. normally conspiratorial, but perhaps there is some kind of correlation between all of the UFOs we've been citing recently and now the <laughs> CEO stepping down. Maybe, maybe, maybe all of them are stepping down and making a new super platform. That would be sick. You twitch. The Illuminati's making some plays for the shadow government. Things are getting very odd. But anyway, okay. Emmett left us a blog post kind of detailing his 16-year adventure here here at the helm of Twitch and even made a Twitter post kind of going over it briefly as well. In October 2006, we started working on live video for the internet. That became Twitch. More than 16 years later, I'm now- Well, Justin TV, then Twitch. ...a father and ready to move to my next phase of life. I wrote a blog- More than 16 years later, uh, thousands of Twitch streamers being banned for no reason, and uh, the ad incentive and partners getting still zero respect. Time to move on to my next phase in life. Let's see what we can f up next. ...post, but the short version is, Thank you so much to everyone who built this with me. I'd like to make note that this is probably the first time Emmett Shear has ever said a single word about Twitch on his Twitter account. I've said this a million times, but you would have no idea- Bro, did you guys just change shirts? Oh no, he moved his hair. ...single word about Twitch okay. on his Twitter account. I've said this a million- I'm, I'm telling you that's an AI chat. That is a f***ing AI. ...times, but you would have no idea Emmett Shear is the CEO of a major company like Twitch if you didn't just look it up yourself. True. I bet you were even scratching your head when I said the name Emmett Shear. You're probably going... Yeah, I actually thought his name was Dan Clancy. I f***ed it up. Who the f*** is Emmett Shear? Is that a <laughs> no, I had no f***ing idea. Like a NASCAR driver or something? Yep. Like, who's that? I bet most people were probably under the impression Twitch didn't even have a CEO. That position yep. was filled by Amazon Androids or something. Emmett Shear has been my poster child for the last couple of years for a CEO that is beyond out of touch with the company that he runs. And it really does convey the idea. I'm a firm believer that Twitch is actually run by all of the bots that occupy kick.com. Yeah, that he doesn't care about it. Again, he doesn't talk about it. He doesn't engage with it ever. He doesn't celebrate anything about Twitch. If you scroll through his Twitter, you'll never really find any mentions of anything going on on Twitch. Know he had a Twitter. I imagine it's he probably doesn't even know five streamers that use the platform. Like, I've made this very clear. This is this is no secret. I've been very public that I'm not the biggest image sheer fan. You're not going to see me heartbroken. Is that really a bad thing, though? Like, is that really a bad thing? Like, for example, Vincent Kennedy McMahon is, like, the CEO and director of WWE, and every single time I see him, I want to rip my f***ing eyeballs out. I don't think I'm necessarily against a hands-off-from-the-shadows approach on Twitch, but then again, that also probably explains the lack of updates and, like, you know, policy changes or any quality of life features for any streamers or viewer, for that matter, being changed uh, in any decent amount of significance in the past, what, 16 years? And curled up and crying over Emmett Shear no longer being Twitch's CEO, right? I think he has been the most passive CEO of all time, and it's really felt like he is embarrassed of his position at this company. He doesn't yeah. talk about it ever. He is never at any of the functions. He doesn't know like half of the shit on his platform. I bet the reason he stepped down is because someone at the office might have accidentally like CC'd him on an email reminding him that he's the CEO of Twitch. And he's like, what? I'm the CEO of Twitch still? I thought I gave up this position eight years ago. Oh, hold on, let me rectify this. So then he just put in his two weeks notice. Like he just has n not in a long time been active in the platform he is the CEO of. Yeah, it's like when OTK members realize I'm a part of OTK and they still shit on me every, every video and every single clip. Can we just be nice to me, please? I swear to God, I'm not that bad, chat. I swear to God, I'm not that bad. So I haven't been a big fan. Obviously the changes that Twitch have been experiencing over the last couple of years have been overwhelmingly 
terrible and misguided, showcasing just how out of touch a lot of the higher-ups at the company are. So, you know, Emmett Shear stepping down actually kind of had me pumping my fist a little bit. And I know I'm not alone with that sentiment either. I saw a lot of people celebrating like they had just won the f***ing Super Bowl, hoping that maybe this is the turning point for Twitch where someone new will step in that's more in touch with the community and will try and correct the ship here and lead Twitch down a better path than the one that- Probably not too in touch with their employees, because then they would just be Blizzard Entertainment. ...that it's currently traveling over the last couple of years. But unfortunately, all of that excitement soon turned to excrement, as I continued to read, they did announce who the new CEO will be. And unfortunately, it's more disappointing than season two of Promise Neverland. Dude, weave! Good reference! I get it, I get the joke! And I think this was a big f up. But they've chosen to give this position to the current Twitch president, Dan Clancy. And is that bad? I think this is a bigger blunder than when Jeffrey Tubin masturbated on that Zoom call and lost his job. Like, this, this is so silly. Dan Clancy is kind of just like the bearer of bad news for Twitch. By far his biggest claim to fame and the biggest stain he's already placed upon the company even before becoming CEO is this. He was the brave warrior that proudly posted this. A letter from Twitch president Dan Clancy on subscription revenue shares. This post still lives in infamy and still haunts the platform and scares a lot of creators because we're actually coming up on the period that these changes are supposed to roll out and take place. This was the post where Twitch announced that they are going to be getting rid of the 70-30 split with partnered streamers that are on those deals. So 70-30 will no longer exist. The share... Okay, here's the thing. I think that getting rid of the 70-30 was a good thing. I thought it was complete bullshit how some creators get 50-50 and others get 70-30. Why? I don't know. I mean, shit, my stupid ass had like 40,000 subs at a certain point, And I still had a 50-50 revenue share which was ridiculous when some of these others have 70 30 with a sub count of 400 subs just because they've been on the platform longer it's like bro dude i've done more on the platform a shorter amount of time than some of these other streamers it's just the truth now to be honest i'm glad we're all on the same playing field because if there's one thing that i like it's equality i like when everybody gets treated the same okay i didn't like hearing that there was special treatment for certain streamers that shit was annoying as shit now to be honest the 50-50 split is still bullshit. I mean, it is jarring that it's not even at least 60-40. Or out here streaming every day, busting our ass, playing Fortnite. This fucking corporation takes half my fucking money? That's crazy. Shares will go back, will go down to 50-50 across the board, and they will never go back to 70-30 ever. So it'll be 50-50 across all of Twitch for everyone, no matter what making it the lowest shares on any streaming platform across the entire internet. No now, way! In order to make up for this, they doubled down on ads. Something everyone really loves. Uh, Twi no, dude. Twitch for some streamers is f***ing impossible. Okay? Dude, there are some streamers who run 11 minutes of ads every hour. I feel f***ing guilty running three minutes. And dude, last month, I turned off all ads on my channel. Because I can't f***ing stand it. How the f***? am I going to tell somebody, hey, see you in six minutes, go watch this Fanta or erectile dysfunction commercial for half an hour. Like, bro, it's crazy. Chat, just get ad block or subscribe with Prime. Which ads, the unskippable f***ing 30 second ads that play when you click on a stream. Yeah, it's insane. people love those. So you can imagine how great that news went over. Like, yeah, we're taking away 20%, but we're giving you more ads. <laughs> Like, because that kills viewership, man. Nobody is going to sit there and watch the ads. So, they are going hog wild with their ad program. Incentivizing creators to run more ads to make up for this difference now in income. And just pushing ads even further down the throats of everyone on the platform. This was... By far, probably one of the most controversial decisions Twitch has ever made. And I still, to this day, have not seen a single person come out in support of it. Because it, Twitch is an Amazon-backed company. Amazon, of all companies, can probably afford to keep Twitch running. <laughs> like, it, without problem, I would imagine. Especially considering subscription revenue is not the main driver of revenue for the platform in general. It was just extremely greedy to have that be the target, the first thing they target when trying to be more monetizable. 
Instead of focusing on other aspects of monetization, they immediately went right for the throats of creators by taking away something that had been established on the platform for like a decade now. So with ridiculous. That like 70 30 split shit. So this was a big deal. It is still a big deal because it's supposed to roll out with. Everybody should have been brought up, not some people brought down. You know, like that that's just not how it works. Like everybody either should have gotten 70 30 or we should have dropped that and gone up to 60 40. It just makes no sense. In the next couple of months. And Dan Clancy was the one who announced it publicly. I don't know if he was the one that suggested the idea. I don't know how involved he was with the decision-making process with this idea. Though, as Twitch president, and from everything I've read, it seems like he's very hands-on with these kind of decisions and these policies. So I would wager a guess that he was very on board with this. I mean, the other thing that's really ridiculous is the ad incentive. And a lot of people, y'all don't know this. Uh, there are streamers who get told, with, with pretty good viewership, pretty good viewership who have like four or 500 viewers that's pretty good and they get told to stream 180 hours in a month and if they do so they'll get four hundred dollars four hundred dollars for a hundred and eighty hours worth of streaming like that is ridiculous now even aside from just this decision people have talked about him over the last eight or so months kind of speaking to his character a popular streamer named Jake and Bake actually got to meet him and had Jake had this to say. It'll be a long time. Be honest, dude, the president of Twitch. I'm sure personally, I have no problem personally with him. <laughs> but honestly, I don't feel confident uh, as a streamer on the platform as someone who is that out of touch. Yeah. What is the streamer's need and want? Oh weird. no. I walked away feeling like depressed. Seriously, sad. And it wasn't just Jake. A couple other. What? Wait, then how in the hell did they even get him to be the new president of Twitch if he just doesn't care? Dan once told the company he re relates with creators because he was involved in drama and theater clubs in high school. He is a good human, but I never felt like he was able to relate to creators and the struggles they face through every step of their career. Okay, well then why is he the president? Chat thoughts? Like, why is he the president? Sometimes he is good at making money and that's it? Okay. Dude, I'm so tired of the monetization being above everything, like the quality of the platform. Like, here's a crazy idea. Yes, you can be good at making money, but if you just make a good product, money will come, and that's the f***ing truth. Like, this, this short-term business clickbait monetary grab bullshit is taking over everything, and it's awful. When the reality is, if you build and trust into your audience, if you build and trust in your community, the, the, the success will come. And it might slow down for a little bit. And you might fall off for a little bit. But eventually, nothing brings you better business than delivering your community good content and showing that you actually give a f about them. Other people came forward as well, most notably DJ Wheat, who held a previous hype. Dude, dude, dude. The, the literal best advertisement for moving the kick is Twitch's policies and Dan Clancy becoming president. That is insane. There is, there is no better advertisement than the mishandling of this f***ing platform. It is actually not. Position at Twitch, DJ Wheat said, Dan once told the company he relates with creators because he was involved in drama and theater clubs in high school. He's a good human, but I never felt like he was able to relate to creators and the struggles they face through every step of their career. Jesus. Wow, gamers, he's just like us. He did drama and theater in high school. No way! Woohoo, yippee! That's my boy. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, he didn't even bother to try and pretend to be, like, a gamer or anything or, like, ever played games, uh, uh, at least according to this story and a couple other things I read. He focuses on, like, drama and theater as being, like, his Bro, relatability what? quirks. Amazing. Okay, so he goes on LSF. Uh, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't seem great. In fact, I would argue this is a recipe for disaster. Dan is almost 20 years older than Emmett Shear. He's 59, and he no. doesn't have a Twitter account or... Bro, this mother probably never drank a chug jug in his entire life. ...much social media at all. Not that I necessarily think that in and of itself is a bad thing. I usually applaud people who don't have a Twitter account because going on Twitter is like willingly sticking a cactus into your eye. In a case like this where Dan is the CEO of Twitch, I feel like having a social media presence is extremely important because where else are you going to be able to see the community's feedback on new features or changes? I, I don't think there's very many users on Twitch that are going to the support line in order to leave reviews or give you insight on how they feel about certain things. Most people are going to talk about all of this on Twitter or other social media platforms. So if you're completely absent from there, how are you going to see it? And I feel like True. being able to see these responses 
is integral. Let me take over a platform that I don't f***ing use. Yeah, let me tell you how to fix something that I've never done. How is this even legal? How, how, did, this, how did this happen? To running the company in a healthy way and delivering features people want or making changes people want to see. At least that's just my perspective on it. Maybe I'm way off the mark and they have other means for Dan to get this kind of information from the community that I'm just not really thinking about. So either way, though, uh, I'm not super optimistic with Dan Clancy as the new Twitch CEO. I would, however, love to be proven wrong and Dan Clancy comes in here like an absolute rock star and knocks it out of the park. I mean, he won't. Uh, it's There's probably no worth way. mentioning I have actually met him before. Uh, in fact, Matt and I have both met him. When we went up to Texas for a week to do like some wacky content, he was at one of the functions we were attending and introduced himself. And I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. Like he was nice and seemed passionate about Twitch. The only thing that he really like asked me was if I play games. I was like, yeah, I play games. And he was just like, that's cool. That was really kind of like the extent of our interaction. It was just really small talk things about like, yeah, Twitch is a place for gaming. You play games. Awesome. And the, and the reality is, bro, no, it's not. And you know that. You know it. I know it. We all know it. Nobody f plays video games on this platform. They literally just don't. They don't. They don't. Nobody plays games. And if they are playing games, it's the ones that are bad. It's just f***ing Valorant. Did you see the stream rewards? Just chatting. Just chatting. Just chatting. How many clips did you actually see of people actually playing video games that weren't competitive fps like valorant in which which by the way nobody likes and if you do get a job so i can kind of just vaguely speak to his character of like he seemed very passionate about the platform but i i don't know anything else really about him he seemed nice i guess but just being nice doesn't make you a good leader of the platform so hopefully like maybe he has good intentions and has yeah, we'll good say. ideas on ways to make Twitch better because it needs some drastic improvement with the directions it's been heading. So I guess we'll see how all that goes, but just wanted to talk about all this because it's big news. That's about it. See ya. Spoiler alert. It goes f***ing bad. My opinion, uh, I think the CEO change will actually be a disaster. I would rather someone who's not around versus someone who's out of touch. Me personally. That can only bring apart bad things. That's the video. Peace.